Most people probably know Techland as the developers of crappy zombie games like Dying Light and Dead Island, but before they made crappy zombie games, they were more well known for their work on the Call of Wario series, a bunch of Western themed games that went up and down in quality with each installment. So it's widely agreed that both the first, second, and final game are the better ones in the series, and widely agreed that the third game, The Cartel, is a horrible piece of shit. We will get to that one in a matter of time. First, let's start way back where the whole thing started. The first game in the series, simply titled Call of Juarez, was developed by Techland for the Xbox 360 and Microsoft Windows in 2006. It was pretty unique at the time because it featured some gameplay elements that have become commonplace in modern FPS games, like a somewhat open world feel to the level design, and a real focus on delivering the narrative through strictly first person cinematics. The story here is interesting enough for the most part, you've got two characters, Billy Candle and Reverend Ray McCall, both of whom the player controls. There's almost an even trade-off between the two characters for the game's 15 chapters, as they're both caught up in the same sequence of events involving bandits and some cursed Aztec gold. In the opening sequence, Ray gets under the impression that Billy is responsible for the murder of his brother and wife, who happens to be Billy's mother and stepfather. Later on in the campaign, this plot is pretty much thrown to the wayside as both characters get caught up with a gang of bandits looking for the gold at Juarez. At one point, they kidnap Billy's sweetheart Molly and force him to track down the gold for them. There's a few moments when as you finish a chapter as Billy, Ray shows up on the scene and in the ensuing chapter, you get to play through that moment from the opposite perspective. Now, this does kind of ruin the mystique of Ray as this sort of unstoppable force that's constantly pursuing Billy, but from a story perspective, it's pretty neat seeing it from both sides. Playing as Ray is pretty much a standard first person shooter, you can single or dual wield revolvers, you can hold a heavier weapon like a shotgun or rifle, and also wield Ray's Bible, which does little more than recite out a random passage. Ray has a slow motion quick draw ability, and is also able to duel against certain characters, which is a pretty half-baked mechanic and somewhat poorly implemented. But thankfully this only happens a few times in the entire game. Weapons have a tendency to literally fall apart in your hands if you use them too much, forcing you to keep searching out alternatives during gunfights. The shooting controls are a bit finicky and the crosshair is a little bit ambiguous as to where exactly your next shot is heading, but I often think this might have been intentional. I mean, guns back then weren't entirely reliable or accurate, so maybe this was done on purpose. On the other hand, playing as Billy is an entirely different kettle of fish. Most of Billy's missions involve stealth over combat, where you crawl around hiding in the bushes or staying out of the light as you pick off enemies with a hunting bow. When you aim with the bow, the game goes into slow motion, allowing you more time to line your shots up, which is pretty cool, and taking out some clueless asshole from the shadows with an arrow to the face never gets old. These mechanics are surprisingly well designed and they're easy enough to pick up and get the hang of. There's a few key moments where you have to remain entirely undetected, but most often if you're seen, you're given the chance to fight off your attackers. However, the platforming sections are where Billy's chapters really suffer. Billy's got a whip which can be used to grapple onto trees during these sections, and he can also pull himself up to ledges if they're within his reach. Now, it sounds fine on paper, but in practice, it's just a little bit sloppy. There's a chapter later in the game where you'll have to literally scale an entire mountain, and during this portion, you'll understand just how bad this really is. Most of the campaign is kind of up and down, but the last few chapters are actually pretty damn fun. There's a chase sequence where you're on a horse as Ray trying to rescue Molly, and a brief chapter underground as Billy where you're dodging booby traps and spiders like you're Indiana Jones. These kind of moments are brief but enjoyable, and they really needed more of this kind of stuff. In terms of the presentation, it's not amazing, and yet it does kind of look like a game from 2006 through and through. The game runs on the third iteration of the Chrome engine, and it really does encapsulate what video games looked like in the mid-2000s. Most of the outdoor areas show off the real capabilities of the engine, with large environments and lots of foliage and vegetation to make the game world seem more realistic. On the audio side of things, the voice acting is all over the place, but the sound and music are pretty top notch, so it's got that going for it. The major issue with this game is that neither of the main characters are really all that likeable, and their storylines are initially directly opposite with one another, making it confusing who to side for. Billy, for instance, is just an asshole. Within the first five minutes of the game, he's trespassed on an old man's property, stolen his revolver, and then terrorized the man by firing it, despite being asked to leave. Heading to a nearby town, he runs into the sheriff, who Billy proclaims is always mean to him. Gee, I wonder why. After amicably being asked to hand over his firearm by a man doing what he is paid to be doing, what's the first thing Billy does? 
he goes and gets another gun. Damn, I gotta get myself a gun. How does he do this? Well, by sneaking into a brothel and stealing a whore's derringer while she's out of the room. Might I add that he steals this derringer from a woman who has made it abundantly clear she's going to have sex with him at no cost. Like I said, what an asshole. Oh my, you have grown. Then of course the owner of the whorehouse shows up, understandably pissed off that Billy showed up again and made an absolute prick of himself. And this is the character we're supposed to relate to. Ray on the other hand is unlikable, mostly just because he's a grumpy old man. Don't no! Billy, however, is just a bad egg, and all the backstory he gives during the opening narration about how he was treated as a kid, his stepfather beating him up and all that kind of stuff, well, it starts to make sense. You wanna see me plan it already? This constant reliance on the storyline and narrative also gives the game a real stop-start feel. Whether it's stopping to watch a scripted sequence, a cinematic, or one of the game's checkpoints auto-saving, it seems you're constantly being taken out of the moment, and it often drags the game down. The other issues are, as I mentioned before, you've got some pretty bad platforming controls and some subpar shooting mechanics when you're playing as Ray. But these are just a product of the time the game was developed, and they really only take a bit of time to get used to. Just don't get me started on the melee system. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of Techland's games. I don't understand what people saw in the Dead Island series, and I consider Dying Light to be one of the most half-assed games of 2015. Call of Juarez is at least quite original for its time, and you can really see a lot of mechanics and elements in the design that I'd say are even somewhat pioneering. But it does suffer in a few key areas, and it isn't quite as timeless as it perhaps could have been. It's also a shame the story often falls flat on its ass. You see what looks like a gripping western, a story about revenge and redemption, with a synchronized storyline as two misguided heroes cross paths. It's just I never found myself really giving two shits about either of them. Thankfully, Techland would learn from their mistakes and improve things with the next game, Bound in Blood, which serves as a prequel to the events in the first game. And in the next video, Sunny Jims, that's the game we're going to be taking a look at.